This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, is there any way to create a mask where two objects intersect? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have an example file here loaded in. Now the file here consists of two subtools. So I have a polysphere, and then I have this cylinder object that's been extruded out and given a little shape to it. And the question is asking about if there is a way to generate a mask where one of these two objects intersect the other one. So let's say as the example here, I want to generate a mask on the polysphere here where the cylinder object is connected to it. So I want to generate a mask on the polysphere that's giving you this kind of half circle shape here. So how can I go by doing that? So before getting into the workflow and the steps involved to get this process to happen, I first just want to talk about how masking is applied to the model. So masking is going to be dependent on the amount of polygons your object has. So with the polysphere here, you can see if I turn on my polyframes, you can see that the density of the polys on this object is pretty sparse. So if I hold down control and then click and drag on my mesh to apply a mask to the polysphere here, you're going to notice that I'm not going to get a very clean edge on the surface of the model. And this is because the masking is looking at the topology of the current mesh and it's applying a mask to that topology. So the more topology you have on your mesh, the cleaner the mask is going to be. So for this example I have here with the polysphere and the cylinder object, I want to generate a pretty clean mask. So I first want to make sure that I divide this polysphere up so it has a good amount of topology on it so when I generate that mask, it's nice and clean. So I first want to make sure I have the polysphere selected here. And I'm going to navigate down to the geometry tab and open that up. And I'm just going to divide the sphere up a few times, and I want to get around, say, 700,000 to a million polygons. So after I'm happy with that, I can just come over here and delete lower. And now I'm going to go back up to my subtool palette. So the workflow I'm about to show does have a few steps, but it will generate a nice mask between the intersection of these two subtools. So to start this process, I first want to go to the subtool palette over here, and I want to make sure I have my subtools kind of stacked like this. So I have the original mesh that I want to put the mask on, and then I have the subtool underneath it that is the part that I want to generate the mask from. The next thing I want to do is I want to make the top subtool a start group. So I'm just going to come over here, and I'm just going to click on this little arrow icon, and this is now going to turn that subtool into a start group. Now after this subtool is a start group, I now just want to activate the live Boolean system. So I'm going to come to the top here and turn on live Boolean. And now I want to process these two models here with live Boolean. And I want to process these with an intersection function. So what that means, it's going to take the sphere here and it's going to take my cylinder. And then it's going to dump out a new Boolean resulting mesh that's going to contain each of these two models merged together. So to do this, I go to the subtool palette over here. I'm going to go down to the Boolean area. If you're using dynamic subdivisions in this process, you want to turn this dynamic subdivision button on. And then I just want to click this Make Boolean Mesh. This is going to look at the start group I have here, and it's going to process the Boolean for this start group. So I'm going over here and click Make Boolean Mesh, and this is now going to process. After this is completed, at the top here, I should have a new tool. If I come up here and select this, See, so this is the resulting Boolean mesh. If I turn on my polyframes and zoom in here, you can see that the topology object is pretty dense because I divided both of them up. And you'll also notice that those two subtools that were processed with the Boolean have been merged together, and only the topology at the intersections has been changed. So the topology here and the topology here are the same topology that was on those original models. And now, after these models have been processed with the Boolean, only the areas at the intersections have changed. So now that I have processed with the Boolean system, I now have this nice solid mesh. And now what I need to do is I just want to isolate the sphere portion of this model here. So to do this, I'm going to hold down Control and Shift and then click on the sphere. This is now going to hide that cylinder object, and now I have something like this. Now I want to just delete that hidden geometry, so I'm going to go back to the tool palette. I'm going to go down to the geometry tab and open this up. 
I'm gonna go down to the modified topology area here, and now I'm just gonna click delete hidden. So now on the Boolean resulting mesh, I just have that sphere with the cut where that other object intersected. So now I need to go back to my tool palette at the top here. I wanna select the original tool that I used to create that Boolean mesh, and now I wanna append in that result. So I'm gonna to go to the sub tool palette here, I'm gonna click append, I'm gonna append in that sphere again. So now I should have a new subtool that consists of the Boolean result, but only contains the sphere. Now I can click that object. I'm gonna activate solo, so I just can see that by itself. And I wanna take this object and I wanna fill it with a solid black color. So I'm coming to the top here, I'm gonna turn on RGB. I'm gonna set my color to black over here in the color picker. I'm now gonna to go to the color option up the top here and I'm gonna click fill object. And that is now going to colorize that model or fill the vertices with that black color. So I'm gonna change my color back to white and I'm just gonna turn off the live Boolean system here and then get out of solo. And so now I should have these three subtools visible. So I wanna hide the cylinder object. So I'm gonna go back to my subtool belt over here and click this eyeball icon. And now you'll notice I have something like this. So I have my original sphere and now I have the Boolean processed subtool that has been now filled with black. So now what I want to do is I want to now project this color that I applied to this model here onto my original tool. So I'm gonna select my original polysphere here and make sure I turn on the colorize option. If you have applied color to your model, you may wanna just apply a white color to this mesh now as well. So make sure you have white selected, go to the color option up at the top here, fill my original subtool with white. And now with that filled with white color, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna store a morph target. So I'm gonna scroll down to the morph target area, open this up, click the store morph target button. Then I'm gonna go back up to the subtool palette here. I'm gonna to go to the project area. And here I'm going to change this distance value to 0.1. And now I have the original sphere with the settings set correctly. And I have the eyeball icon turned on for that Boolean resulting mesh. Now, after you have your file set up like this, we now just need to process using this project all, which is going to take the color information and the vertex information on that Boolean processed model, and it's going to project it onto my original sphere. So go back to the subtool palette and simply click project all. Now, after this process is finished, I should now have something like this. And if I come up to my subtool palette here, I'm just turn off solo, and then I'm gonna hide the Boolean object and this should be the result I have. So my original sphere here has had those details projected on it from that resulting Boolean mesh. Now, when you do this projection, if your model had some changes in topology, so the vertex values on it, it will distort the mesh a little bit. So this is why we stored that initial morph target. So now with the polysphere here, I can go back down to that morph target area here, I can click switch, which is going to return that model back to its original vertex positioning, but it won't return it back to the original color. So it's still gonna retain that color value that we projected, but it's gonna return the mesh value back to normal. And then I can just click delete morph target on that to just remove it. And now I'm left with this. So my sphere still has the coloring that's projected on it, but its topology or its mesh vertices have returned back to their original position. Now after I have my model like this, I now just need to apply a mask based on the color intensity of the model. And this is now going to generate a mask based on that intersection. So I'm gonna go down to the masking area here. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna go to mask by color and click mask by intensity. And then now I can close that. And now I can go all the way back up to my subtool list here. I can turn off the colorized information and now you can see I have my polysphere here and it has that mask applied. Now if I come over here and turn on that cylinder object here, you can see that that mask is fitting perfectly where that intersection of the cylinder was. And now I can perform any sort of function on my original model here. I can even invert the mask if I want by holding down control and clicking off on the canvas and that will invert that mask. And so now I have that result and a mask generated where that subtool intersects. So to run through this process one more time, let's just reverse the options here. So instead of having the mask being generated on the sphere, let's generate it on that cylinder. And I'm gonna go through this a little bit faster this time.
So I'm going to take my cylinder object and I just want to make this the top subtool. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to click the move up button here, which will move it to the top. I'm going to turn off the start group for that polysphere and I'm going to make the start group now on my cylinder object. I now want to process this with the Boolean. So I'm going to turn on live Boolean. I'm going to go down to the subtool palette here. I'm going to go to the Boolean area and turn on this dynamic subdiv option and I'm going to click make Boolean mesh. This is going to make a Boolean mesh of these two objects here. After this completes, I can go and find that object at the top here. I can isolate the part that I want to keep. So this part here, so I'm just going to hold control and shift and click. Let's remove that other object. I now want to delete hidden. So I'm going to go to the geometry tab, go to modify topology, click delete hidden. I now want to fill this with black. So I'm going to go to the color palette over here, select black. Make sure I have RGB turned on. Go to Color Fill Object. I'm going to set this back to white. Now I'm going to go back to my original scene here that looks like this. I'm going to delete the old subtool here that I used initially. I want to append in that Boolean result. So here we have that Boolean result of that cylinder there. I want to now select the top subtool here. I want to hide the polysphere. So now I should have something like this. So I have those two cylinders sitting on top of each other. And the Boolean resulting cylinder is filled with that black poly paint. I want to color fill my initial object white. So make sure I have white selected, RGB turned on, color fill object. Now this has white poly paint and the other one has black poly paint. And I want to store a morph target on my initial object here. So I'm going to go down to the morph target area, open that up, click store morph target. Now I'm going to go back to the subtool palette here, make sure I still have that initial cylinder object selected. I'm going to go to the project menu, I'm going to change the distance to 0.1, and now I'm going to simply click project all. This is going to project the details from my initial cylinder onto my original tool. Now after this is completed, I should have something like this. So now I come back up here, I can hide that Boolean result. Now I can go down to the morph target area again and click switch to get my original morph back and then I can delete that morph target there. Now I can go to the masking area here and go to mask by color and click mask by intensity. Now I can go all the way back up to my subtool palette here and I can turn off the poly paint icon for that subtool. And now I should have that cylinder object there and you'll see a mask has been applied. And if I turn on that polysphere there, you can see it's directly in the area of where those two objects intersected. So I hope that helps. And if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.